So I'm going to start with a bit of a gruesome photo and how all the failures that has led to my success always deals with cutting the arm off your baby, which is one of the most uncomfortable things in the world, but sometimes you have to do it. <laughs> so maybe not a real one, but <laughs> so it all started on a red couch when I was in college and grad school. I wanted to share some music with friends. I wanted to create a new way to do it, but I failed to find a way to do it. So what do you do? You create something and if you want to build something. So what I did, working with other friends and other schoolmates, was create something called the Social Music Project. I had no idea what I was doing. I talked to other friends, pulled people together, and thought, let's create a whole new way to rehearse, share, and create music together. So what did I do? Well, I decided to move to the one place where you create software, California. <laughs> of course. Well, I know that's not true anymore. So I went out to California, found some people to work with, went in San Francisco and Palo Alto, moved all around until I started to find people who could execute on what I had created in my mind. So I created a company called Audio Is to create, connect, and collaborate on music and sound. A great idea. And we started to build a prototype. But then problems started to arise. Things were getting done quickly. I didn't know exactly what to be built. But I started to keep telling people to work with me. But they were all contractors. They didn't care. I had failed to find the right people to work with. Since they weren't staying up every night, they weren't sleeping on couches, they weren't couch surfing and living the life of ramen, which we all know well. So what I decided to do? Move back to New York, where I knew people, I knew where people were, I knew who cared about what I was doing. So what I started to do was find the people who had passion, who had music in their blood, who had development, who were happy to stay up late at night and work like I was. So what I did is I created a new project called Soundpipe. It was great, it was simple, it lived on every device, it worked, but only in, only in our group. We never shared it with anyone. And a little bit once in a while, but then we had this huge problem. Someone else copied it. I had failed again. Someone else took what I had, copied it, but they had millions of users, millions of dollars. I had failed. Again, on something that I had loved and thought could change a whole lot. I hadn't launched it. That was the biggest problem. Like we talked about before, if you don't show people and you don't get it out there, you won't learn anything. And inherently, you'll fail if you don't put something out there for people to play with. But then I knew there was something I knew about. I knew about sound. There was something I could do with this. It had been always music. It had always been audio. But then I started to look farther back. What else did I know? I had all the sound and all this technology. But what else could I rely on? Well, I had had problems reading when I was younger. And this gave me an idea. Well, I used to listen to audiobooks. I used to listen to books on tape. What if I combine these together? But I cared about the web. So what I did is I drew on my failure at reading and created something else out of that. What I created is what I'm working on now, which is spoken layer, which is a way to take what's on the web and listen to it instead of just reading it. But then I, again, went through the same pattern, built it internally, kept iterating, going on without showing it to anyone. And then I had the fun time of running out of money. Failed again. No more money, no, no resources. Dead had fired my whole team because I had nothing. It was just back to me again. But then I got some great news. I had made it all the way to the stage at TechCrunch Disrupt with no team, no money, and no product. <laughs> awesome! And 17 days to go till I had to go on stage. So I pulled, every, pulled everything I could together, got the app built, and actually launched it. And that's where I am today, and that's what, where I've been going. And what I found out is that if you add up a whole bunch of failures, it equals success. If you keep having the ability to fail over and over and over, you're still moving forward, and that's a success. And that's why I really view this as there's, you know, all the different paths you go through, but making that choice. Taking one and making a hard choice, because if you don't choose and don't go in a direction, you're not going anywhere. And that's why I always come back to the mantra of sometimes you have to cut the arm off your baby. It's one of the most difficult things you ever do, but firing a team, get rid of everyone running out of money, you will always pull something out of where you're going. And you always have to push the boundary. And that's something that I've been comfortable with for a while in wearing a skirt as a man or all kinds of things. You know, and it always reminds you of this one situation. I learned what failing was and I knew how to operate in that. And I always challenge people, what do you know well and are comfortable with the potential of failing but know it so well that you'll ride on the edge? You'll push it there and where can you push something even though other people will view it as a failure or scared of the potential of failure, you have to go after it because you know it that well. So go fail.